Hey everyone, welcome to Simplexity, where we simplify the complexities of life and add a little curiosity and contemplation to meaningful, sometimes difficult conversations. I'm your host, Allison Stoner. Last week, we spoke with brain expert Jim Quick, and the conversation was chock full of life-changing knowledge, so we decided to split it into two episodes. Please do check out the previous episode for context, and then jump back in here today. I can't wait to hear your responses at the end. P.S. Jim's book, Limitless, is out as of April 28th, so go get your copy at limitlessbook.com. Without further ado, here's part two with Jim Quick. Welcome back. We're here with brain coach Jim Quick, ready to fire up our minds again. By the way, while we were waiting, I realized if you go to limitlessbook.com and pre order Jim's book, he's actually offering a 10 day program that helps yeah. guide you through a memory and reading retention techniques so that when you get the book, yeah. you can understand and comprehend and digest and apply it with greater efficacy. But the best part, I mean, I think the best part is knowing that underneath all of this, he's donating 100% of the proceeds to charity. And that really reflects that you're committed to the legacy and you're committed to giving people their power back instead of just trying to build your own kingdom. And we give a lot of respect and support to those who are in alignment because we feel the same here at Simplexity with our community. So make sure if you haven't already, open up another tab, go to limitlessbook.com pre-order the book and then sign up. You'll, you'll get to be a part of this program. I'm doing it too, so we can do it together. So Jim, I want to talk about this current climate that we're in. Mm -hmm. Many of us are isolated at home due to COVID-19. And you previously described this period as being in a cocoon. We may be eager to utilize this time to work on ourselves, or we might actually feel quite dysfunctional trying to stabilize and get anything done. Do you have any tips specifically that we can implement to strengthen our minds and cope with fear? Yeah, no, thank you for bringing this to light. And thank you again for this amazing community and for the work that you do, because people need brightness now more, more than ever. And so I would recommend when people are in a cocoon, I mean, you think about this metaphor of metamorphosis, you know, going through transformation. And the butterfly is a symbol of transformation. And when a caterpillar feels like it's the end, it actually is just the beginning of a brand new life. And if, you know, as we talked about the power of choice, I'll give you five C's right now. Five C's because everything is literated so we can memorize it really easily. One of the things we could do is if we're thinking about how we could come out at the end of this as a butterfly, so we could be stronger, we could be wiser, I would say number one, the first C is clarity. What a wonderful time to have solitude, to be able to get alone with our own thoughts. It's the clarity about our life, about self-reflection, about who we are, what we stand for, that we're not distracted by a lot of things now, that we're, we're here, and part of it is controlling our environment and maybe not looking at the news all the time, 24-7. But in solitude, we get that gift of clarity and self-reflection. And one of the things, we talked about the power of questions. Some powerful questions you could ask yourself are things like, as I'm taking a pause right now, what's most important to me in my life? If I'm gonna read, just kind of come zero based, you know, starting fresh, what's most important to me in life? What's most important to me in my relationships? What's most important to me in my career? What's most important to me, you know, in just, you know, being a human being? And also having the ability to go and reflect to see, are your actions aligned with those values? So clarity is wonderful right now. Use, use this time to clarify things because when we're confused, we don't do much. So get clarity. And the second C I would suggest is contribute. I feel like that everything in nature has to contribute in some way. Even when you're mentioning, you know, how we're donating the author proceeds to great for purpose causes for years and years, we've built schools and everywhere from Guatemala to Kenya for girls who don't have access to education. We also provide health care because a lot of girls don't go to school because of compromised health or, and we also provide clean water because in some villages, they spend six girls spend six hours a day just 
chugging water back and forth for their families. And so that's one of our missions is education for all. And so in what ways can you contribute while we're in this cocooning phase? Where can you put some of your time, your talent, your treasure into something beyond us? And whether it's calling on a neighbor or somebody who's elderly who might be, you know, alone right now, you know, what ways can we support, you know, people on the front lines and what ways with this amazing technology where everybody has access to YouTube lives and Facebook and Instagram lives, what can you teach? Like, for instance, immediately we started implementing free programs for students online because all the schools are closed. And since they're, they wanna continue learning, we don't want just school closing to get in the way of their education. We're teaching how to learn programs on our social media so we can help kids to be able to, to learn how to learn. You know, so in what ways can you uniquely contribute? Because ultimately the formula is learn so you can earn, so you can return. Learn, earn, so you have more to be able to return. So that's the contributing phase. The third one I would say is, is be creative. Wow, what a wonderful time, whether this is days or weeks or months, for us to be able to turn on our creative juices. You know, that thing that we've been putting off for so long, now's the time to just, to be able to commit. We always said we didn't have time, but now, now a lot of us have more time than before. And I really do believe the future is, belongs to the creatives. You know, as everything is disrupted, the whole world has been disrupted. You know, and even before what was going on, you know, jobs were going to artificial intelligence and automation. So what makes us uniquely human? Creativity, imagination, you know, our strategy, double down on those kind of things. Where can we be creative? Because I think the ultimate infinite resource, untapped resource, but it is limitless here on planet Earth is the human mind. There is no limit to creativity. There is no limit to our imagination. There is no limit to human determination to be able to solve this and come together. People don't know during the Great Plague is when Shakespeare created Macbeth, created Anthony and Cleopatra. It was during the plague of London that Sir Isaac Newton had, couldn't go to university, had to be go back home. And when he was going and being socially distant, that's when the apple fell on his head and he came up with theorems of gravity, right? And theorem of motion. I believe this could be a new renaissance, actually, you know, where we are home and we could be silent with ourselves and be creative, tap those alpha theta states that you and I have to have geeked out over before to be creative, to create something brand new. And then who knows that somebody during this period could come up with ideas that could change the world. How amazing at this. This could be some of the most productive, you know, days and weeks of our lives. So clarity contribution, you have creativity, which is so important. I would also say capabilities. Wow, like what are we learning during this time? I mean, just, I, I mean, I hope it's not just binge watching, you know, every single show possible online, but I hope we're using this time also to, to level up our learning. That it's, again, it's not shrinking things down, it's actually leveling up our skill base, our capabilities, our competence. You know, and you and I have talked about the competence, confidence loop, that the more competent you get at something, the more confident you get at it. And because you're more confident, you're more likely, likely to do it. And then because you're doing it more, you get even more confident. It's just like reading. And, you know, reading is a lot of people don't read because they're not really skilled at it. So they dislike it. And I'm not very good golfer, so I don't golf very often. Mm -hmm. But if I could play like some amazing golf players did, I would have confidence and confidence. And because I was so confident and it was so fun, I would be on the playing more and I would get better at it because right. that's the cycle. Right now, talking about reading, I think reading is to what our mind, what exercise is to our body. Reading is a wonderful, like, have your to-do list, but when I'm talking about the sea of, of capabilities, have your to-learn list. What's everyone learning right now? What is everyone reading right now? Mine's you know, a lengthy list. Exactly. <laughs> and so we all have these books that have been sitting on our shelf that we could pick up, and you don't have to read it, you know, like, just 10 minutes a day, you know, just enjoy, just put, put your time into that, because that's how, if your brain is a supercomputer, how you install new software is through reading. You know, somebody has decades of experience, right? I, I literally have 28 years of experience teaching this. And so, the, you know, the three decades, and somebody can sit down in a few days or in a week and read that book, 
They can download decades into days. They don't have to spend the countless hours and years and years of reading thousands of books on this subject, you know, and, and, and you know, all, all the money I invested to learn all this. You can sit down in a few days and learn the best of what I know in that, as well as all these other great experts. And so capabilities is we use this time to learn something brand new. And so that thing that we've put off, you know, maybe we want to learn Spanish, you know, maybe we want to learn how to speed read, oh, yeah. maybe we want to learn how to dance, right? You know, every, everything is available and, mm -hmm. and online. So capabilities. And finally, the fifth C I would suggest while we're cocooning, if we want to come out of this as well off as we can when we emerge as a butterfly is self-care. We've all heard that self-care is not selfish. And I don't just mean personal hygiene, physical hygiene. I mean, I mean, like everyone knows to wash their hands and sanitize everything. I'm talking about mental hygiene. I mean, nowadays, it's not just about mental intelligence. In this book, I will show you exactly how to quickly remember facts, figures, formulas, foreign languages, mental intelligence, we got that. But it's also about mental health. And it's also about mental fitness you know, keeping a strong mind, you know, and so that you could, you know, have a great brain and your, your, your mind will follow, your mindset will follow, your focus will follow. And so what can you do for self-care? And it always, for me, comes down to, well, you know, 10 things that we know your memory, one third of it is maybe pre predetermined by genetics and maybe biology, but two thirds is in our control, in our own care. Now, some people, depending on how, you know, what you, the studies you read on epigenetics, saying that we, we're in control of everything, right? But at least two thirds, you know, when I train at the Cleveland Clinic, at Harvard, at the Center for Brain Health, these places, you know, we, we know that there's certain things that are good for your brain, a good brain diet, right? You know, what you eat matters, especially for your gray matter. You mentioned before that, you know, our brain is such a small percentage of our body mass, maybe 2%, but it requires 20% of the nutrients, you know, and the energy. And so what are you feeding your brain? You know, this whole area of, of neuronutrition that I talk about on my podcast often, that what you eat matters, especially for your gray matter. Mm -hmm. But another thing you could do for self-care is to rid yourself or reduce those negative self-talk. And I'm not saying that we don't happen, we all do. You know, it doesn't ruin your life, but your brain is that supercomputer and your self-talk is the program it will run. If you knew how truly powerful your mind is, you wouldn't say or think something you didn't want to be true. And that's right. again, not to say you have a bad thought and it ruins your life any more than eating that donut ruins your life, but it's the consistency. We want to catch yourself. I don't have a great memory. Yeah, just add a, you know, catch yourself. And those are the uh, auto negative thoughts, the ants, yes, right? Yes, mm -hmm. so I take that from Dr. Daniel Amen, who's a famous brain doctor. He's done 175,000 brain scans. He calls them kill those ants, automatic negative thoughts. And we're, we are in control of those thoughts, you know. And so when we hear those own thoughts or those dominant questions, maybe a dominant question is like, why am I so stupid? You know, and then all of a sudden, you start looking for reasons. Oh, here's why, here's why, here's why, right? That's mm -hmm. why my question in the beginning was like, why am I, you know, why am I so broken? And I found all these reasons why. I was, not, your bias. I was not enough, exactly. I was looking for evidence and to validate. And so, you know, maybe you, we become sensitive to our self-talk and our habits and our mindset. And so it's a lot of what we're talking about, you and I, is the power of just self-awareness, mm -hmm. you know, knowing yourself and knowing your habits and knowing your routines and habits of thoughts and habits of feeling also and habits of physiology and habits of movement mm -hmm. and breathing where, you know, most of this is unconscious. And so I would say reduce the negative self-talk. A third thing you could do, exercise. You know, even if you're stuck in your apartment and you don't have a lot of space, the body is made to move. The brain thrives on movement. You know, I always tell people as your body moves, your brain grooves. And you know this. So you get people up moving all the, all the time. And it's also good for your brain. We know that dancing is good for your brain. It has just been well-researched. Oh, yes. And so keep your brain active because as your body moves, you also create brain-derived neurotropic factors. And I know your community loves a lot of the science yeah, also. Brain-derived brain neurotropic factors, BDNF. And it's like fertilizer for your brain. We know that when you listen to this podcast uh, and you're doing like going for a walk or you're doing something rhythmical, like on a treadmill or on elliptical, you'll actually learn it better. 
And studies show that when people just listen to something static or they do it while they move, especially in a rhythmic motion, and they get tested afterwards for their comprehension retention, that people actually doing their moving around because the brain primarily controls our movement. And it's not one way. By using our body, it stimulates our brain, creates neuro new plasticity. Mm -hmm. And so movement, and another thing I would say is uh, just brain nutrition. Just make sure right now that if you're not getting everything in your diet, part of self-care is just boosting your immune system. And so your vitamin C, vitamin D, those antioxidants are more important than ever to be able to have a strong immune system. And now I'm not an expert at this. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. But go to a functional medicine doctor and have a nutrient profile done and see where one might be lacking. You know, right. for the brain, the big one are your omega-3s because your brain is mostly fat. And so make sure I can teach somebody a great speed reading technique and we have all the techniques in the book, but you have to get the hardware right also because if you're lacking those B vitamins or different things, you're not going to be working on optimal. Another few practical things everyone can be conscious of, number five is a positive peer group. And this is important because science has shown that who we spend time with is who we become. And we've heard that phrase before in the self-help community, but the reason why is because we have these things called mirror neurons in our, in our nervous system. And that's our empathy. That's where empathy takes place. That's where if you watch somebody dancing or you watch a movie or sports and you could feel what they're feeling, that's your mirror neurons turning on and it's, it imitates things. And you know, children are really attuned to it because they, they don't do what you say, they do what you do, right? Mm -hmm. And so your mirror neurons, what happens is when you spend time with a lot of people, we start adapting and adopting their behaviors. You know, their same eating habits, you know, their same posture. That's why couples that they start looking alike, right? Mm -hmm. You know, or them and their pet or whatever, because they're spending so much time, we start imitating. They say, if you spend time with nine broke people, be careful because you're going to be number 10. You know, all the decisions start being the same. So positive peer group is being around people. Who are you spending time with? Even as we are isolated, we can still connect with people like we're doing right now through FaceTime, through Zoom. We can call and reconnect, use this opportunity to connect and be around people that encourage us. And if you haven't found that person that encourages you and cheerleads for you, then I would suggest be that person for somebody else. You know, be that person for somebody else, especially be that person for you. Because mm -hmm. while we're saying, talking about self-care, it's not just meditation and eating the right foods. Part of self-care is self-love. Mm -hmm. And a reminder for everybody that as you're looking in the mirror, we have to fall back in love with the person in the mirror who's been through so much, but is still standing, mm -hmm. right? No amount of love from the outside from another person is going to give your soul what it needs from you. And so take care of you, positive peer group. And then another thing, a clean environment. What a wonderful mm -hmm. time to clean your home because your external world is a reflection of your internal world. Mm -hmm. And you know this, you clean your desk or you clean your desktop and everything's in the right folder, you have clarity of thought. And so what a wonderful time to clear cleanliness. You know, that's why we talk people about making their bed and doing these things for their brain. Another thing, sleep. Wow, this is a big one for a so mm -hmm. big part of self-care. Everybody, to remind you, you are not invulnerable. The number one thing you could do for your immune system is to sleep. You know, you could restore, you could rejuvenate, and to prioritize sleep. So in this book, you know, I talk about uh, sleep challenges I had over the years and what I did. The best research on what you could do, everything from complete darkness in your room to having a cold temperature, which are your body uh, likes, to waking up at the same time each day, going to bed at the same time, your body, even on the weekends, you know, try to be disciplined that way because it'll give you your, your freedom other places, right. you know, and also not having caffeine past 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. because the half-life of caffeine stays in your body for maybe eight, eight hours and all these mm -hmm. things you could do, waking up and, and looking at the sun or being out in, in, you know, in the daylight first thing in the morning it helps to reset your, your rhythm. So many things you could do to optimize your sleep. And then finally, eight, nine, 10, protect your brain. That's part of self-care. And this is coming from somebody who's had three traumatic brain injuries, like wear a helmet, make, you know, make sure your friends are wearing a helmet and just be careful during this time because we can be very like antsy when we're you know, in our own homes. And then nine new learnings, which I'm preaching to the choir. Everyone who's listening to this right now loves to learn, mm -hmm. but it's so important because it helps you live longer. 
there's a study done on nuns, I call them super nuns that were living 90 and above, and half of it had to do with their gratitude, their emotional faith, but the other half, they are lifelong learners. And what you have to do is schedule it, put it in your calendar. When are you gonna read today? When are you gonna listen to the podcast today? Yes. Because if you don't put it in your calendar, your calendar is like the number one productivity performance tool you have. Put it there and schedule it like you would schedule meetings with you know clients or I mean, all that stuff that's important. You have to it's schedule. It's a whole new uh, interpretation of meeting of the minds. Go meet exactly. with your mind. You're so good like that. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to borrow that too. Yes, please. And, and then number 10, stress management. Chronic stress, chronic anxiety, it shrinks your brain. And chronic fear, it compromises your immune system, as we talked about, which makes you more susceptible to the flu and colds and viruses. So stress management, what are we doing to lower our stress during this time? And part of it is shutting off the news, you know, being informed, but not overindulging. But then part of it also is positivity and performance they're contagious as well. And that's mm -hmm. when I'm talking about a butterfly coming out emerged on the other side of this. This is what we could do is, again, while the beauty is in the butterfly, the growth happens in the cocoon. And it's kind of like this little boy who finds a caterpillar in his backyard and says, mom, can I keep it? Can I keep it? Can I keep it? And she's like, yes, but you have to care for it. And she gives him a mason jar to put the the caterpillar in and feeds it leaves every single day and the caterpillar just eats and eats and he also puts like a little tree branch in there a little branch and one day the caterpillar climbs up the the branch and it starts to weave a cocoon around itself and the boy is just watching this so fascinated right and asks his mom what it's doing and he says this is how it becomes a butterfly you know son and uh, he's like he can't wait he can't wait for it to come out and emerge and one day it opens there's a little bit of opening coming in from the inside and it's a small small little crack and the, and the caterpillar is trying to push its way out push its way out and it's struggling and the boy is a little bit impatient and wants to help the butterfly so runs into the house grabs some scissors walks back because you're not supposed to run with scissors <laughs> and then he cuts open that little crack opens it up a little bit and then out pops out this caterpillar but it's not a full butterfly it has a very swelled body. It has very shriveled up wings. And he's, he's expecting it to transform and fly away. And he just waits and waits and waits. And then he goes to his mom and says, you know, what, what happened? And he explains what he did, that he cut it open. And his mom says, the reason why you don't want to cut it open for the caterpillar is because the caterpillar has to struggle, my son, has to go through that phase because when it pushes itself and forces itself using its own effort and strength to go through that little hole, it pushes the, the fluids from the body into the wings and it nourishes the wings. So it's actually, it needs the struggle to be able to get to that next level of life and transformation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now that, you know, if you're struggling right now, and you're listening to this, my heart goes to you. You know, I wish for you strength, security, safety, whatever it is you need most in the world. And I would say, you know, prioritize your own self care. That a lot of people are helping everybody else, but they're not taking care of the most important person, which which is yourself. And part of self care is asking for help. And so to do those things and and prioritize your own sleep and manage your mind. And nobody can do all of this. And again, it's not about being perfect. It's just making some progress. Take take one area of this and then develop right. it a little bit. You know, what area are you not putting the adequate energy into? And I feel like when we do that, that the treasure we seek is hidden often in the work we're avoiding. The treasure we seek in life is often hidden in the work that we're avoiding. That's so helpful. And if, as you said earlier, learning is really just remembering, then I'm thankful for all of the reminders you're giving us in ways that we mm -hmm. can care for ourselves and use this truly to be in a cocoon, you know, just to go over the, the five C's, the clarity, contribution, creativity, capabilities, and care. In addition to what you were talking about with killing ants, the auto negative thoughts, I use three more C's, catch it, challenge oh, yeah. it, change it. So we just add those, oh, I add love those that. three C's. <laughs> we could just have a, a C of C's. Now, before we end, I'd love to come back up for air since we've really been digging deep. And I just want to ask a fun question. And that is, you've gotten to work with a number of really, at least from the outside looking in, awesome, notable industry leaders and celebrities. First and foremost, we 
very regularly talk about the illusion of separation here um, mm. and that it's really just a perception if we think this other person is better, more qualified, or it's hierarchical. So yeah. I just want to pierce right through that. Nonetheless, these people have still taken what you've taught them and applied them in ways that are leading to global change. And I wondered if you wanted to share what some of the most, the highest performers are doing habitually, the most consistent mm -hmm. habits, and or maybe just a fun anecdote. Because, you know, he's taught Will Smith, Elon yeah. Musk, works with Google, Virgin, Nike, Zappos. I mean, we could go on forever. Quincy Jones, oh, which yeah. is so cool. Let's talk about Will Smith because he did the cover blurb of the book. And we're very, where I was very just honored on the cover of the book. You know, he has, says, Jim Quick knows how to get the maximum out of me as a human being. That means a lot coming from, because I'm such a big fan of his and, you know, and how he brings magic to a lot of things. So years ago, he was filming a superhero movie and um, that's right up my jam. I, I learned how to read by reading comic books. Something about the stories brought it to life. That's why I think it's so important, storytelling and creativity. It gave me hope and it gave me real help and inspiration. And so we were filming in the dead of winter in Toronto and there were night shoots. I don't know how I've you- I've done I, dead I of do winter it. and night shoots and I don't I, know why they organize sets these ways. I'm actually working on getting some mental health practitioners on sets. Oh my goodness. redesigning how productions operate. It's ridiculous, yeah. but carry on. Until then, we're frigid and definitely affected. And, and it's the least, function. and it's the least, talk about like, you know, optics, it's the least glamorous thing in the world. Yeah. And it's just like, and, I, and I'm just like, man, this is so not what I thought it would be like here. It's just like, everyone's telling you to hurry up and we're not even, you're not even doing anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I, don't, I don't get it. And, but earlier that day, so they're filming from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, in the dead of winter. And, but earlier that day, you know, we go through, you know, I, I teach actors how to speed read scripts and memorize lines, have better focus and just, you know, get in flow and uh, optimize their brain out, all these habits and everything, right? And we went through his, oh, dominant question. And we found out his dominant question, one of his dominant questions is, how do I make this moment more magical? Actually, that was his original one. And then we, we, we said, okay, can we make this better? And he was like, yeah. He was like, how do I make this moment even more magical? Because by saying even, it presumes it's magical already. So I was like, wow, that's a good one. I like that. I was like, can I borrow that? That's a great question. So I started to ask myself that. Later that night, it's two o'clock in the morning and his family flew in also, we all know the song, mm -hmm. and we're out there and we're freezing and we're just waiting. We're looking at these, you know, these screens and they're resetting everything. And Will comes out and it brings blankets for all of us. And he makes hot chocolate and he starts telling stories and cracking jokes with everybody. And I noticed in that moment, I was like, wow, he's living his dominant question. How do I make this moment even more magical? Wow. You know, and I just felt like the life we live are the lessons we teach. Right now, people are looking at us and, you know, our teams are looking at us and our friends and our family, they're looking at us. What's the story we want to tell people about this time? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask everybody right now, fast forward weeks from now, months from now, years from now, because we could all talk about years ago, mm -hmm. but what's the story we want to tell later on to our family, to our friends, what it was like back then, who we were like, because how we are acting is literally either inspiring or it's not. And so what's the energy we're putting into this moment? How do we make this moment even more magical is something that I would be thinking about. This is wonderful to do with you because this is so raw and it's so real and so relevant. So I could, I appreciate it, you know, not only what you do, but the manner in which like you hold space for your for this project yourself. No, it's it's our privilege and honor. Just recognizing you're so generous with the way that you teach and giving us all of these gems with mindset and, and motivation and also looking at in between mindset, motivation and methods right. to see inspiration, ideation, implementation, and then the whole thing being someone becoming fully integrated. Um, there are just so many nuggets of wisdom and I know you'll have a billion more when you're giving us the 30 year version in your book, Limitless. Where can we find it? When yeah. does it come out? How can we yeah. pre-order? I want everyone Absolutely. to grab, grab their copy. No, you're so wonderful. At limitlessbook.com, we did something special for everybody. And I want this to be the most read and used book you know, ever, like for, for this year at least. And not the most bought book, 
I mean, that would be nice too if everyone gets, you know, be able to gift it out and everything. But red book meaning that I'm going to show you how to read this book because fundamentally I'm a reading teacher. So when people go to limitlessbook.com, we're going to give them access to a 10 day speed reading memory program that takes you through a limitless process to help remove limiting beliefs that you have about yourself, to be able to tap your motivation and tap your unlimited energy, and then mm -hmm. also how to focus, remember, understand, and read mm -hmm. better. So when the book arrives, you're like, you can't wait to do it. And then what we're going to do is we're creating a limitless book club, and we've never done this before, but the book is broken down into four sections. And three of the sections are mindset, motivation, and methods, but there are four total sections. So what we're going to do is after everybody has the book is I'm going to create a four week book club where everyone reads the first section and then we come together online and I'm going to show you how to remember everything you just read, how to apply everything you just read and really troubleshoot it for four straight weeks. And that's my gift to everybody who's listening and watching because I want to help you to read this book. In fact, there's a chapter in there that I added on how to read this book or any other book. And it just will help you with every other book that you've ever bought. Um, it'll help you read it and finish it. Because again, knowledge by itself, it, it doesn't give you power, but applied knowledge really does. And that's my goal is to take common sense and make it more common practice. I'm also including two bonus chapters in there also. So for people that have kids in their life, how to apply limitless to children in your life, nieces and nephews and students, if you're an educator, and also a bonus chapter on limitless teams. So if you happen to have a team of two or three or 300, you could take this same framework and apply it towards your culture and okay. build learning organizations. So this is my way of really my mission again is because I grew up as the boy labeled the broken brain. I want to build better, brighter brains because when we talk about technology and how it's driving, you know, overload and distraction and digital dementia and the ultimate technology you were born with, it just doesn't come with an owner's manual and yeah. it's not, you know, user friendly. So in the book actually it says finally an owner's manual for your brain. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that this, it's your community is so smart and they're so progressive and they like to know the science of it. So I share the neuroscience of learning, but it, in a way that's fun, in a way that's very practical, in a way that you get enjoyable results. And then we can turn the uh, memory game into a, a fun party trick that everyone yes. can go home with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we can spread the memory game the way that we're watching other things spread throughout the community. Oh, we should do yeah. that challenge. We should do like a whole memory challenge yeah. on this. Maybe we could do like you and I, we could do maybe an Instagram live together. We could give like a, a mental challenge when people are at home and do that. Mm, I, I would I actually would challenge. love that. That would be so much fun be able to do that while you're washing your hands what are the 10, you know, brain foods, forwards and backwards, or something, something like that? I know, and then let me see if I remember. We had blueberries, yeah. spinach or greens, wow. avocado, salmon, turmeric. Is turmeric yes. in there? Yeah, yes. it was. Uh, Very good brain food. Mm, I mean, it's, ama it's amazing when you... Yes. When you understand how your memory works, you can work your memory in a very fun way. And I would challenge everyone also by thanking them because this was a special conversation. I hope somebody, you know, got value out of just one idea. And I would challenge everybody. One of the ways to learn something faster is to teach it to somebody else. And I would re-listen to this podcast episode and take notes and think about somebody you care about and share it with them, but also teach them something that you just learned. And because that's what, that's why you learn anything. You learn it so it could benefit you, but you learn it so it could benefit the people you care about. And one of the ways you could do it is to take a screenshot of this episode, this video, or this podcast, or your notes, post it, tag Allison, tag myself at Jim Quick, K-W-I-K, and then share your big aha. What is one thing you got out of it that was just like, wow, that was, I needed to hear that. And by sharing it, your community, your friends get to hear it. And there's this butterfly effect where it's just as the butterfly comes out, there's this butterfly effect. That means that a butterfly flapping its wings in New York City could create a tsunami of change across the globe mm -hmm. because of how systems work, dynamic systems work. Mm -hmm. Just as we know we're all connected, just as we know because we are, you know, what's going on in the world. As that spreads, or as fear spreads, so can hope, so can kindness. Mm -hmm. 
kindness, so can caring, so can love, so can compassion, so can wisdom. I want to remind everyone who's watching, listening, kindness is free. So sprinkle that stuff everywhere. <laughs> we could create a huge butterfly effect. But post your big aha, tag us both, and I'll repost some of my favorites. And I'll, I'll actually send a copy to one person um, mm. just randomly also to uh, Great. An advanced we would love that. Book. Thank yeah. you so, so, so much for everything you've shared. You know, I, I hate to break it to you, but my community and I, we have one goal and that's to put you out of a job because we okay. want to apply everything you taught us Yes, so please. that we no longer need to come to you and sit at your feet, except to just exchange yes. and, to, uh, and to continue the conversations. Um, so I, I look forward to that. That would be um, my biggest joy. I would remind yeah. everybody in this time of struggle that if you're struggling right now, you're inspiring people with your grit and your grace. And if people aren't saying it and difficult times, they could define us, they could diminish us, or they could develop us. We decide mm. and, um, and we could do it. That your life is like this cocoon. It's like an egg. That if an egg is broken by an outside force, life ends. But if it's broken by an inside force, life begins. Mm. Great things come from the inside. And everyone, if you're still listening to this, you have greatness inside of you. You know, you have genius inside of you. And what a wonderful time to bring it out. That's it's amazing. simple and it's complex. And it's and complexity. That it, yeah, that's exactly what it needs to be. You know, and even if something is simple, it doesn't mean it's necessarily easy, but it could be worth it. And that's my thing. It's not always, it's simple to eat the right diet. It's simple to move. It doesn't mean it's easy to do, but here's the thing. If you just do the easy things in life, life gets hard, putting things off and just avoiding those difficult conversations. But if you do the hard things in life, life gets a lot easier. You are smarter and stronger than you think. But Allison, you're a blessing. Thanks for being such a force for good, force of nature. Likewise. Yeah. Truly. I really appreciate it. And we can all follow you daily for your insights and wisdom and encouragement and motivation at Jim Quick on Instagram, yeah. correct? And Instagram, that's K -W -I -K. Facebook. Yeah. K-W-I-K on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any of those. those and then ones. you've got to make sure you check out his podcast. It's Quick Brain with Jim Quick. Brain. Quickbrain.com. Yeah. It will give you links to Spotify, to Stitcher, to iTunes, to wherever you find your podcast. Just look for Jim Quick. And thank you again for, you. for having me. And this is such a fun conversation. Yes, it really was. Um, we will put to work everything you've taught and we'll all go over right now and pre-order Limitless at limitlessbook.com. Big fan here. Thanks for chatting with us. Thanks, Allison. Wow. What an incredible interview. Now, we've arrived at our mantra portion of the show. I will give you several mantras today, and I'll read each twice. On the third repetition, I'll remain silent so you have the opportunity to repeat the mantra yourself. And remember, jot these down somewhere so you can revisit them and start making measurable changes in your mind and potential. All right, let's jump in. The first one is, when I only do easy things, life gets hard. But when I do hard things, life gets easier. When I only do easy things, life gets hard. But when I do hard things, life gets easier. My greatest treasure may be in the work, places, or questions I'm avoiding. My greatest treasure may be in the work, places, or questions I'm avoiding. Third, as I build competence, I develop greater confidence. As I build competence, I develop greater confidence. And lastly, What's my dominant question? What's my dominant question? Now have fun exploring and I would love to hear once you discover what your dominant question is, uh, 
please do share it. DM me, leave a review, rate the podcast, all the good stuff. Um, today's episode presented so much to think about. And it's really reframing our ideas on how we think and learn. It reminds us that we hold the power to level up our brains. So thanks for listening. And if you think this episode can be motivating or empowering to anybody, please do share it. I will see you next time for more Simplexity. It's anything but small talk. Peace.